Hello and welcome to another tutorial brought to you by Acrito. In this tutorial we're going to discuss about how to add textures and then create materials for this already created scene. We're going to use 3D Max 2010 and V-Ray for rendering. Ok, go ahead and open up bedroomstart.max. You'll find a, a bedroom already modeled in every small detail. We just need to add textures and create materials to it and afterwards we're going to render it. Ok, I'm going to hit Alt W on my keyboard to maximize the perspective view. We're going to work on each material one at a time. First we're going to create the material for the walls. Just click on wall and hit Alt Q on your keyboard to enter isolation mode. This way it will be easier to see what's going on. Ok, go ahead and open the material ed editor. You can do this either by pressing M on your keyboard or just hit this icon here. First we're going to switch from a standard material to a V-Ray material. Just click on this button called standard and from the material map browser select V-Ray material. You can double click on it to load it. Ok, now go ahead and assign this material to the selection. It will say that this, the name is duplicate, just rename it to wall. Ok, so we have a material called wall. Now, what I want to do, I want to add a texture to it. First of all, I've, I've already gathered a list of textures that we're going to use. You can find plenty of textures uh, on the net, but for this tutorial we've already um, gathered all the materials required. You can find this, those materials in the textures folder. As you can see, these are the materials that we're going to use. Ok, so what we're going to do, we're going to load the concrete stucco on the walls. Now, on the wall material, under Diffuse, just click on the little square near Diffuse. Now, from here select Bitmap, you can double click on it, and go to the root folder where you have saved all those files. On the texture folder select Concrete Stucco, and then hit Open. Ok, so now the, the texture is loaded, but we cannot see it yet on the, on the viewport. To see it on the viewport, just click the Show Standard Map in Viewport on the horizontal bar in the Material Editor. Ok, so I've clicked it, but if I zoom in, I don't see any result yet. This is because the wall was created from a spline and uh, it doesn't have any UVV information. We're going to add this information. Minimize the Material Editor for now. Ok, so let's go ahead on the Modifier stack. In the Modifier list, just select UVV map. Ok, now we can see some results, but uh, this doesn't work for us. Just switch from planner to box. Ok, now uh, as you can see, there's a uh, there's this orange box that surrounds uh, the entire object. The problem is that uh, the texture that we are using has been stretched. So let's fix this problem. Just go a little lower on the UVV mapping modifier and under alignment hit bitmap fit. Now it will ask to uh, select a bitmap. We're going to select the concrete stucco that we've used previously. And I click open. As you can see when I click open, the box has been scaled to fit the resolution of the image. Now the problem is that uh, the texture, the box that surrounds the model is a little bigger for the model. So what we're going to do, we're going to scale it down. Just click on the plus near UVV mapping in the modifier stack and select gizmo. Ok, now as you can see the orange has turned yellow. This means that it will allow us to move, scale uh, and rotate the gizmo. Go and hit select and we're going to select it uniformly down. Ok, I'm going to zoom in to see if this is good enough. Ok, I think it could be a little, a little lower. Maybe something like this. Ok. Ok, so I think we have a pretty much good result. As you can see, uh, there are some irregularities that will make the wall look very good. 
Okay, so when I'm finished scaling down the UV map, I'm just going to click again on the gizmo to make sure that I've exit the UV mapping sub selection. Okay, so now for now the texture is applied correctly on the walls. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set the material to function as a wall. Let's go ahead and open the material editor again. Okay, so now on the material editor we have the diffuse map called map zero, but we want to modify the material and not the texture. Just from the drop down menu, go ahead and click and select wall. Now we've returned to the material and not the texture. We have the stucco placed on the diffuse, but what we want to do is duplicate this and, and place it under the bump map. Just go under maps rollout scroll down a little bit and just hold and drag the map to bump. It will ask what method you want to use and let's just say copy for now. Okay, now we, all, we have uh, some sort of a 3D effect on this. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little bit and hit F9. So it looks good for now, it will look even better when we, uh, when it has things to reflect and reflect. Okay, close those for now and I'm just going to hide this also, hide selection. Okay, moving on. Now, uh, we're going to add texture to uh, those frames that sit just up side of the bed. Okay, so I've selected them, just hit Alt-Q to enter isolation mode. And we're going to use another wood material texture to it. Just open the material editor, select another empty slot, switch from standard to viewing material, and assign the material to selection. Under diffuse color, we're going to add a wood texture. Just click on the square in diffuse and then go to bitmap. From here we're going to use wood fine. Just hit open and make sure you check show standard mapping viewport so you can see what's going on. Okay, the, the only problem here is that I want uh, this material to be rotated. Meaning that I want the lines to go uh, vertical and not horizontal. Let's just rotate the map directly from this coordinates rollout. Go under W angle and make sure that it's set to 90. Okay, I think it's good. Yep. Okay, so let's go up to the main material. Let's just call this wood and let's add some reflections and bump it. First of all, go to Max Rollout and drag and drop the wood frame from the diffuse to the bump slot. Hit copy. Okay, make sure you activate the background. Okay, now let's go back to the reflect. Give it a small reflection value. Check for error. And the reflection glossiness should be 0.9. Un unlock the highlight glossiness and let's give it a little lower value of 0.70 or maybe 0.66 let's double click on it to see it in large scale okay as you can see the bump value is too high Let's just go back to the maps rollout and lower the bump from 30 to about 12 and hit update to see the result. So, I think it looks good. Okay, select those again. Click exit isolation mode and right click and hide selection. Okay, moving on. Now let's just give those cylinders a material. As you can see, I've selected them once, it's only one big object. Hit Alt-Q, render isolation mode. 
ok now let's select another empty slot and let's call this material chrome change it from the standard material to a viewing material assign the material to selection now we're going to leave the diffuse color to a gray and just make the reflection about 70% white activate the background ok so let's just change the reflection glossiness from 9 to 0.95 and hit Fresnel reflections uncheck unlock the Fresnel IOR and change the Fresnel IOR to 10 ok now what I want to do I just want to maybe make the diffuse color a little more black So, this is pretty much it. It acts isolation mode. And we're going to use the same material for those parts also. Okay, so I think we have the... We have prepared the spots. Select both those objects and right-click hide selection. Okay, moving on. Now what I want to do, let's just take care of this part. As you can see, this is made from two objects actually. Okay, uh, the upper part was used for Boolean. And what I want to do, I just want to add that part to the entire object. Now, as you can see, we have an edit poly here. Just go a little lower and hit attach and click on it. Okay, so now it's part of the object. Now, the thing is that the frame of this uh, will be wood, but the doors will be just pure white, will be plastic. Do that. Open the material editor, and we're going to use the wood material that we've already created to just drag and drop it to this. Now, as you can see, the uh, this, the mapping coordinates are doesn't really function well. We're just going to add a UVP map to it and set it to box. First thing, we're going to align align to a bitmap fit. Use both fine again and hit open. I'll go under UVP mapping rollout and scale it down. Okay, let's check if everything functions well. I think it pretty much does. Okay, maybe I'll make it a little lower and just collapse it. Right click, convert to editable poly. Okay, next thing that I'm going to do, I want to just enter isolation mode for, for now. I want to select all the, the frame and I just want to select everything but the frame but it will be easier to just select the frame go to front view press F3 on your keyboard and on editable poly go to polygon sub selection I'm going to select just the frame go to perspective and make sure that everything is selected correctly ok so we haven't selected the inner part go again to frame just select all those parts perspective again okay so we've selected this but we need to select everything that's inside go to edit and hit select invert okay with this selection open the material editor create another theory material on an empty slot and assign the material to, it, to this selection at this point, we can exit the sub-selection from the edit poly and we're just going to take care of this material, the spike material. Remember, this should be plastic. Just make the fuse color to white. Okay. Make it a little bit reflective, maybe a 30%, 40 maybe. Okay. Make sure the background is active. Uh, always, when you're using reflect or refract, make sure you have the background active. Okay, check the Fresno reflections, unlock it, and set the Fresno eyewear to 4. 
and reflection glossiness change the value of 1 to 0.9 and I think it's pretty much good okay let's just exit isolation mode this is set up correctly just hide selection or just I'm just going to undo this I ah, just hide it okay moving on we're going to add the same okay moving on now we're going to add texture to all those furniture, just select them all, select those two, maybe this one too, okay, and the bed also, and hit Alt Q, enter isolation mode, okay, now we're going to open the material editor and just assign the wood material to all of them at once. As you can see, the mapping coordinates are not very well fit. Okay, so we're going to use UVV map. We're going to apply UVV map on all the objects at once. As you can see, we have five objects selected. Just from the modifier list, select UVV map. Set it to box. And under alignment, hit bitmap fit. And select the wood fine texture, and then hit open. Now go under UVV mapping sub selection and scale it down. Okay, we have something like this. Okay, I'm going to exit the UVV map sub selection and we're going to arrange them one by one. Just select those two pieces of furniture at once. First, we're going to make them unique, because the UVV map we've placed on all the objects is now an instance modifier, but we're going to have to work differently on those two parts than the rest of the parts. Just hit Make Unique. When the Make Unique dialog box appears, hit No. Okay, now we can go on this UVV mapping sub-selection, and we're going to rotate it 90 degrees on the Z-axis. I want those lines to come like this, and not the other way around. And now I'm going to rotate it under Y axis also, 90 degrees. Okay, let's check them closely. Okay, so I think it's good for those two objects. Now let's take it closer to the bed. Okay, the only thing I want to do is just make unique. Go on the UVV mapping sub-selection and rotate it under X axis 90, de not 95, 90 degrees ok, I want those to run correctly on all the parts ok, I think it's good now let's take a closer look at this object let's do the same thing just make it unique go on the UVV mapping sub-selection and rotate it under Y axis like this Ok, so I think it's pretty much good. Now I'm going to select all the objects at once and hit Exit Isolation mode. Now with the object selected, just right click and hide selection. Ok, let's move on. I'm going to add a white material to this object and this one. The same material that I've, used, I've previously used for uh, the furniture. Just assign material to selection, right click, hide selection. Okay, so we nar narrow down our selection. We're going to give this object a mirror material. For that, just select another empty slot on the material editor, convert it from a standard to a V-ray material, assign the material to selection. Now, the diffuse color is not important at all because we're going to use a maximum reflection amount. Just take the, the slider from whiteness and give it a 100% white. This will be a mirror. Just right click and hide selection. Okay, now I'm going to add a texture to this object. This is a painting. Just select another empty slot and transform it from standard to a V-ray material. Assign the material to selection and we're going to load a bitmap on the diffuse channel bitmap and we're going to use this abstract temporary collapse image. Hit open. Hit show standard mapping viewport. 
And what I want to do is I want to have the exact result, the exact ratio of the image. For that, I'm going to add a UVB mapping to it. Go to bitmap fit and select the image again. Now, as you can see, uh, there's a problem with the fitting, and that's because we use the alignment on the Z axis. Let's use it on Y axis, and again use the bitmap fit tool. Okay, now go on the UVV mapping sub selection and just move it a little on the X axis. Okay, something like this. I think it looks good for now. Right click, hide selection. We're going to do the same thing for all those images, but we're going to do this at once. So, we're just going to convert the first painting, let's just select the middle painting, and convert it to an editable poly. And I'm going to attach to it the left and right painting. I want to make sure that they belong to the same editable group before I do this. Select another empty slot. Convert the standard material to a viewing material. And assign the material to selection. Now we're going to load on the diffuse map a bitmap. We're going to use this bitmap called 373251 and hit open. First thing, show standard mapping viewport and add a UVV map modifier. Now it's the same problem here, just switch it from Z axis to Y axis and hit did not fit. Use the same image and hit open. As you can see, there's a problem uh, with the scale of this image. So just go under UVV mapping and scale it up. There is just one big image. Ah, something like this. And just maybe move it around on the X Y axis. Oh, X is the you can be mapping sub selection and right click and hide selection. Now we nar narrow down our selection to these objects. Let's just start with the lamp. The lamp is made from two parts, this part and the lower part. The upper part should be a transparent material so the light will pass through it. Let's just select another empty slot, make it a fury material and assign the material to selection. I'm going to use the same red color Make it a little black. Okay, and just go under the refract refraction tab and hit the first fifty percent refraction. Hit OK, and make sure that effect shadows is checked. This is very important. Activate the background and go under the refraction tab. Change the IOR from one point six to one one point one, so there is little or no distortion. Okay. Assign the same material to the other, other lamp. Okay. Now the lower parts of the lamp, all those parts, there are four parts in total, will use the chrome material. Just assign this. Okay, now select all the lamps, all the components of the lamps, right click, hide selection. Okay, moving on. We're going to do the mattress. Selected it, hit Alt Q to enter isolation mode. OK. Now let's select another empty slot, convert it from standard to a material, and assign this material to selection. We're just going to make this a white color. OK, so when it comes to uh, cloth finishings, we need to add a small reflection amount. Just activate the background to see what's going on. And give it a very low reflection glossiness of 0.5. As you can see, now it looks a little too shiny. That's because we don't use a Fresno reflection. So let's just activate the Fresno reflection. If I double click on it, you can see that now it looks much better than without reflection. Okay, just 
exit resolution mode and right click and hide selection. We're going to do the same thing for the curtains. Just select them both at once. Select another empty slot. Convert the material from standard to a V-ray material. And assign this material to the selection. We're going to make those white again. Just make sure that the white is not pure, 100% white. And hit OK. Now, go under Refraction tab and give it almost 70%, 75% whiteness. I had to make sure that this is very refractive, but I don't want to see any distortion in the diffraction. That means I have to lower the IOR to a very low value, that means 1.01. .01. That means that almost no refraction will take, no distortion in the refraction will take place. Okay, we're going to do the same trick with the reflection. Let's give it a small reflection value and a very low reflection glossiness, 0.5. And check the reflection glossiness. Now, at this point it's very important to remember to activate the effect shadows, otherwise the light won't pass through it, and it's very important that the light passes through the curtains. Okay, now just right click and hide selection. Now we only have left those parts. This will be a little complicated to texture, but do not worry about it. Okay, we're going to begin with this part. I've selected it, hit Alt Q on the keyboard to enter isolation mode. From the material editor, just select another empty slot, Ray material, and assign material to selection. Now, I want to give it a, a stripe look. To make it stripe, I'm just going to load under the diffuse panel the tiles map. Let's double click on tiles and show standard map viewport. Now, the good thing is that the mapping is already correct, so otherwise, the mapping would, would have to uh, would take a lot of time to do. Okay, let's just go under advanced controls and hit the vertical count to zero, not the vertical, the horizontal count to zero. As you can see now we only have horizontal stripes. Now, the horizontal gap should be larger. Let's just give it a value of four and change the vertical count to eight. Maybe even more, maybe twelve. And make the horizontal gap, either way, lower the value on here, they look well portioned. Now let's just give it a vertical count of 20. Just lower the horizontal gap. Okay, so I think it looks good at this point. Now let's just change the color, the tile color and the grout that color. The tile color should be white. And the grout texture, let's just give it a red color, dark red. Hit OK. Let's just exit translation mode. OK, I think it looks good. Let's just desaturate the red a little bit. OK. Now let's go back to the main material and do the same thing that we did for the curtains with the reflection, just give it a small reflect ok, make it fresno and the reflection glossiness set it to 0.5 we're going to use the same color this red color that we used here, we're going to use for the pillows we'll just right click on the color swatch and hit copy Ok, now go ahead and select another empty slot, another empty slot from the material editor. Convert the material from standard to a viewing material. And just paste the color on the diffuse swatch. Let's just drag and drop this on the pillows. Ok, and give it a little bit flat. Okay, now this part, 
for this part we're just going to use a white color. Select again another empty slot, make the viewing material, and just assign the material to selection, give it a white color, and make the reflection a little visible. Okay, so I think at this point we have all the materials set. Let's just right click and unhide all. Let's take a look. Okay, I think we're good. And we're going to make a render test. See how everything works. Okay, so I only see the wall at this point. Let's zoom in a little bit. And again. I still see the wall. seems to have some problems. I'm just going to take care of that in a sec. Otherwise I think everything looks pretty much good. Okay now let's just focus on the water. The problem is that the max depth color, when the reflection and or refraction are finished bouncing, it will return it will return a black color. Let's just open the material editor and find the water material. Here. As you can see the fog color is all this blue color from the sides. Now let's just copy this fog color and just paste it on the exit color and render again. Well, that's not a problem. 